In the latest edition of Contract and Farm DVD, we visit two contractors. First up is Denny, he's based in Formoyne County, Cork. Jer introduces us to how he got started and gives us a rundown of the machinery that got him off the ground. The springtime of 1986, uh, it was a brainwave ahead and there was a lot of contractors working in the area which had given up. Right. So, there was a vacancy there which I filled. Started off with a, a John Deere 5420 and um, Massey Ferguson 165 with a 1360 more, 1327 actually. And stayed that way for about two years and we bought a new Holland Forager in 19. 89 and 1905. Held that machine for two years and we got a Heston in a 7725. Had that for four years. Yeah, so down through the years we've had started with John Deere, New Holland, Heston, John Deere, and we're back to class again. And um, loaders, we've had Caterpillar, we've had Owen K and we have uh, Komatsu and now we're back to Volvo again. Twenty fifteen was a tough year with weather causing the silage season to be a stop start affair. We have a look at the mowing while Dave and James discuss their future in the contracting business and what their tasks will be for the year ahead. I suppose just do what we do already and do it right like and hold on to what customers we have and, and I suppose please them as best we can and, and hopefully get new customers going forward so we can grow what we have and, and have a steady income and have a good way of life as well like and mm -hmm. I suppose that's what it's all about and it's what we like doing is I suppose it's all we know what we're doing as well like so as a young lad growing up watching dad at it and now being able to do it myself and hopefully leading my brother down the, the right path as well so he likes what he's doing or knows what he's doing and he's happy with what he's doing is the main thing. So our year would start off in, in January um, this year was quite slow because there was a lot of bad weather but um, towards the end of January we started off with a uh, slurry and we'd be doing that right up until the end of February and then hopefully at the end of February or even at the middle of February if the weather comes right we'll be doing ploughing um, for grain, whole crop, maize, and that would lead on to then setting the maize, setting the whole crop, setting the grain in March, right up to the end of April, sometimes into May. Um, there were some years that we didn't even get a break, and we just went straight into silage, and those other years that we might have a week or two to play around and get the gear ready for silage, and into May then we'd have middle of May to middle of June, maybe the end of June, at first cut. Um, then we'll say July and August at second cut. And the maize then would usually start in, after the plough match, kind of the first of October. And that would cart us right into middle of November, so it would. And that really is our year. the silage then we're using a class 940 in the field picking it up and we're using crone triple mowers um, the reason I like the crones is because you've three men tr or three mowers one man um, just more output and less labor and we've one tractor doing doing that job and instead of having two tractors like we had in the past we just have one big tractor and she's um, capable for most days anyway. But there is some crops out there that she does find hard to drive. Um, could do a bit more horsepower, but uh, who knows, maybe next year or the year after we, we, might go up a, we might go up a model and see what happens then. She did her job this year and she did what I asked her to do, so I'm happy enough with it. The driver probably wants more horsepower, but that's more money. <laughs> 
fine tractor and um, more outfit, isn't it? Combination outfit. It feels nice, yeah. It's nice, yeah. This, this is the first year I would have the, the triple mowers and, and, and this tractor going. I saw it as my first time, first year driving these. Like, so. Yeah. It kind of takes a little bit to get used to those in some And is the 6190 or is she able for it? I suppose she could do it. It's more, more for right, like, especially when the site feels like this there where we're a bit of a, a bit of a hill and things like, you know. Yeah. Um, she's not, yeah, she's not bad on the flat fields there, but the pity things are like kept her small, but she could do it small with more. It's a lot more lower, I suppose. She seems to be well able for it anyway. No, she's doing okay, she's doing okay. How are you mowing with before the crone mowers then, Declan? Uh, we, we need a um, tarot, tarot front to back mower. And, or, and John Deere last year, John Deere mower. Two ten foots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First year with the triple, so they're, uh, they're a good job. Good job. You've no groupers on it, so it probably makes it easier. It's probably less horsepower required as well. Um, geez, yeah, I'd say you want to. I'd say big chapter up as far as they might set the column yeah. stars together, like, and she'd be fairly powerful for them, all right, I'd say. But it's just, yeah, she managed from fine, like, you know, this, this year almost well, the cuts are light, so it's. it's she's, she's, doing, she's doing pretty well. So. Yeah. Well, they're, a big, they're a big help compared to the 10 foot more, you know, with the swap yeah. right there. I don't think you would ever go back. With the rake suffering some damage in the field, it's back to the yard for a quick checkup. Dave also chats about the importance of dealer backup and maintenance of the fleet. Well, a lot of the basic. Um maintenance will be done here in the shed um, the two main dealers then will be backing me up will be McCarthy's and will be Farm Power uh, they take care of any of the stuff that can't be done here in the shed um, I suppose it's all down to wet days coming into the shed going through your machine um, greasing it making sure everything's okay for oil um, changing wearing parts when they should be worn so you won't be broke down the feed when you go to the customer because I don't think any customer wants to see you broke down or listen to a sad story just come in get the job done and get out again like onto the next man so um, we would stock a lot of we would stock all the wearing parts here um, and as I said in the wet days the lads do that anything that needs to be changed is changed and no shortcuts in, in terms of maintenance anyway because the weather will be against us sometimes and when you got to go you got to go and you can't be broke down. Having grown up with the contracting business, James is always available when needed and talks to us about what he likes doing the most. Well, when I come off from school, it's mainly in the weekends I'd look after the gear and do a bit of driving and washing and cleaning and stuff the windows and greasing, so it's always some plenty of maintenance, yeah. So. What's your favourite job on the farm anyway, or um, contracting side of the business? Probably setting maize. I, lo I love setting maize, I do. I said it before with a 4 0 Samco. He had uh, two 4 0 Samcos before, and I said it one year, and I loved it. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, it's just a job I like doing. And I suppose the other job you have is um, you do seem to do a lot of raking. Yeah, raking. I like raking because you're kind of your own boss, you know? Yeah. You're kind of away from the crew. But, um, it's important to have the swart right, you know, a nice even swart so the machine isn't under pressure. So, that's, and plus, the rake is a very delicate piece of equipment too, so you have to be on the ball the whole time, you know.
With the good days few and far between, a sunny afternoon comes along so Dave and his crew get another farm harvested. He runs us through the equipment he's using and how the season is panning out so far. Yeah, we're running a class 940. Um, we have an N90F on the pit. Um, we've grown four or five mowers, um, 9140s, and um, we have a 16190 in driving that. And we usually have four drawing and one raking, and we have the fifth trailer then floating um, in and around like today, now, long draw like today, like with you know, the fifth trailer here, like so. We're lucky enough actually with the way the season is coming, it's I suppose look it's uh, it's different from a lot of other years. The panics the panic isn't as bad for some reason last year and the year before it was mad and this year is just just every every customer just fell into place lovely and we couldn't have asked for better to be honest, like and right. not something that massively heavy like so is there anything to do with the weather? I suppose really the, the, the weather has been very showery this year in comparison to other years, and it's yeah. I suppose we got April yeah, very good to be fair. Like and we got May bad, and you need you suppose you need sunshine in May mm. to make the crop grow, up, um, to make the, the fertilizer respond better to it. And, um, I suppose look, it's it's been definitely cold. And like we see in the maize there, like a lot of maize fields around the country are very um, lemon color, like so. Fingers crossed now next week will get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's what we're hoping for anyway. You're not halfway through the season yet or anything, are you? Or uh, no no. No, I suppose another ten days now after today would would definitely um would definitely put a, a good hand on everything. Right. So I suppose look the class the class is a good machine too, like especially in maze. That's where I kind of really like it. She's four wheel drive and she has the white tires and does a great cracker on the class. Great system, like you, you could be at you could be at grass today at or until two o'clock or something. I say you could cut maze it half to yeah that fast turnaround time. Fast like. turnaround time. That wouldn't be the case in the John Deere, but that's probably the only fault they would have about John Deere is that system. I wouldn't be liking it. Like turn around. Mm. You have a Brocken and Smith there, you have a preference to the Brockens, like sided traders, every contractor has a, a preference to a certain sided trader. Like what why why would you go for the Brockens over any other traders? They're strong. They never they never I suppose look at traders don't really break down now these days, like but Brocken was never a trouble like and they just I, I like the way they're finished. They're, there's a very good will in them and I suppose they're well designed to be fair and um, Look, they, they suit the John Deere tractors we have as well, like they're all in air brakes and stuff like that, like so. Right. Just good lighting systems in them too, like to be fair, like and there's a good spun draw bar in them and they carry a decent load, which is the main thing, like so. I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't go away from Brogan at, at, at the moment. You know. mm. yeah, very good. Smith, Smith, Smith is a fine trailer, but if I had to put money on the table in the morning, it'd be definitely Brogan, I'd be fine, like. So it's a conflict now when James comes on board because he was telling me earlier on he prefers the Smith before the Brogan. Yeah, that's the trouble now. <laughs> Brother was fighting over what, but um, uh, if he wants to buy a trailer in the morning, I'll stop him. Like, so <laughs> he can buy away the Smith. But if, look, to be a close call, I suppose, but still, I'd be still picking the Brogan. Well, you go to something I love doing. Like I, I bought my first machine um, when I was 17, uh, well, and 18, um, and that machine is still in the yard and is still making probably the best money out of all of them. So it was a good investment. We we were 
were milking cows and we were at tillage and we got out of tillage there in um, 2012 after the bad year we said look enough's enough we got to know when to stop as well and just wasn't as paying as well as the cows were even though the numbers were small back then and we've been, they've increased and I suppose you, the good thing about the cows the check is always there at the end of the month like you don't have to go looking for it I grew tillage myself and um, it wasn't a great success. Mm. Even even having all our own gear and everything, we still didn't, we still didn't make much of it. So you wouldn't make a living off it like. Right, see yeah. I suppose the maize would be fairly heavy as well, like to be fair, we do we do quite a lot of slurry for maize and dung for maize and ploughing and for maize and, and tilling and sowing under plastic and without. The harvest is a great job. Then at the end of the year, I think you've uh, you've a second shot at the whole thing, like which yeah. is which is great. Like you have to keep the harvester going, like because it makes it easier to pay it off. Then really, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You have to keep it going. Like the harvesters these days are big money. They're big payments every year. Like so, you have to you have to keep them going. Like you, you can't afford to have them perish. Like. Settles and fellas will decide, right? I'll increase by 40 or 50 cows. I don't think any fellow will, will jump from 100 straight into 200. There might be the odd fellow, or anything like that. Um, to be very, to be very interesting now over the next two or three years to see what's going to happen. Like a lot of your current customers will grow bigger and get bigger, and so you hopefully increase the silage acres. Yeah, I hope to do. I hope to do. I wish them the best if they do, and well. I suppose like it's, it, it'll all come down to price. Hopefully, now that I suppose the, the co-ops and stuff will cop on and give the farmer a fair price. And um, if they do that, they get all the milk in the world. Yeah, that's it. They're looking for 50% more, 50% um, more milk. They won't get it if they won't if they won't pay for this. Is, that like, yeah, they won't produce it like they'll just, they just stay as they are and they won't increase. Yeah, well, that's it.
While waiting for phone calls from farmers to get their silage harvested, Dave and his crew get a chance to spread some cattle slurry on some aftergrass on the home farm. At this, we do quite a lot of uh, pigs, pig slurry as well, um, on grass ground and on tillage ground and maize ground. Um, we're pulling a tank that's four and a half thousand gallons. Um, it's a peak on tank, it's a great tank. Um, we also have a high spec tank. Um, high spec make very good equipment and um, we, do most, we do most of our own customers there are cattle slurry and um, we do a bit of poultry litter as well for farmers on maize ground so we do um, we usually draw it out from the poultry sheds out to the maize ground tip it out and we'd have a loader and spreader there spread it with uh, two ploughs plowing it down as well um, ploughs we have are Canaveral and Overman both are five for us and um, I'm quite happy with the ball of them. The Overman is a good wearing plough compared to the Canaveral and all right, that's the one thing I would see over it. It is a heavier plough, but um, it's a we it, it wears very well, so it does. I'm quite happy with it, so I am. And it turns a nice sod as well. We don't do a whole lot in tillage. We used to do tillage before, um, cutting corn and all, but uh, at the moment we only keep the one pass to, to set a couple of loyal customers corn for themselves which they have their own combines and uh, we'd also set a bit of whole crop as well um, throughout the year for our grass customers as well so um, that's the main that's the main reason we have the three meter one pass like and how do you harvest the whole crop then harvesting the whole crop um, we'd often mow it down and pick it up but uh, I think for the coming year now we're going to be looking at a, a class disc or more direct cut header for the front um, seems to be getting more popular at the moment so um, I think we're going to, to go ahead and invest in that because uh, it's the proper way of doing whole crop and if you want whole crop to survive you're going to have to do it right and please your customers as well. Like. Now that James is a say in how things are run in the business, he tells us of his hopes for the future. I'd like to see the business expanding. I'd like to see probably more gear too as well. Maybe slurry pipe systems, you know, keep keep work going during around January, you know. 
So when you can travel ground, you know, at least you can travel ground in January. Keep the machines moving, yeah, longer throughout the year. Maybe try to get into the plant a bit more, like we used to. Um, maybe more maize as well, try to push maize more. So that really stretches out the season for us when the silage is over with the maize. So it's a big help to stretch out the season, keep all the men employed. We have a quick chat with Johnny while he's spreading the slurry. So you're probably hoping to get back in the silage again tomorrow now, right? Yeah, you? hopefully, yeah. A bit of a break. Yeah, there's a break. This year alone, like, there's a break. Do you know? The weather it, hasn't been yeah, too... No, no, it's settled, you know? And um, compared to last year, like, it was every day you're out, right? Like, exactly. Constant going, like. I'm just going to have a bit of break too, at least you can get a bit of slurry done and a few other jobs and machines and all that, like, you know. It all has to be done too, isn't yeah, it, really, yeah? maintain them all. Johnny, how long are you with the Denny's now at this stage? My second silly season with him now. Right. Um, driving 7430 since I started. Pulling a uh, Brogan 20 foot trailer. Lovely trailer to pull, no bother. Smooth on the road. We're here this morning here. Uh, we're here to pick up 40, 45 acres of silage. Lovely fine day for it. Just waiting on here now for the lads to come on with the extra trailers. Your attention to detail in the cab is fairly well with the carpets and all the painting, the little paint jobs you've done, Johnny. Yeah, the carpet is a lovely job inside, isn't it, yeah? Yeah. Do you know, it's more like driving a car, like looking down your feet there and see carpet. <laughs> you know, it's comfort, like, you know. Yeah. Do you know, uh, you have to keep them clean, like. You do, yeah, I do. You know, like, the gear, like, clean, respectable. Yeah. Going into a farmer there, like, you know, at least, exactly. you know, respectable gear, like, you know. It costs so much nowadays, you have to look after them. You certainly do. You know. So I've been doing more to the 6930 today then, James. I have, John, yeah. <laughs> would, you be easy, would, it be, would it be easy to keep a hand of the harvester anyway? Or? Um, on a short draw, no. He'd be, 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 be up behind you, like, but once you, get in, once you get ahead of him at all, you're gone, like, you know? Yeah. There's no really catching, like. Right. On a long draw, right, you get ahead of him a little bit, right? What, what, what type uh, of rake do you have there, uh, James? Class 2900. And is this your normal job then? In the yeah, I'd be raking and if I'm finished raking, then I'd be drawing and long draws and stuff, so it's grand. Right. We kept going. So, this is your favourite tractor in the fleet then, yeah, James? It's my this pony, yeah. <laughs> 07. She's well able for the rake anyway. Yeah, it doesn't make much, so. James, you're still in school, so this is only kind of part-time job for you, really. It's only a hobby, yeah. <laughs> so, will you go into it full-time now when you finish school, or what? Or? Um, I don't actually know. I, I probably, more likely, I probably will, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I might go on the spanners, I don't know.
like it was slow progress for the second cut, isn't it? Oh, wicked, yeah. The weather is, the weather is very mixed. Like, sure, yesterday and today was the only two good days this week. Like, yeah, today is Saturday. Like, the ground <laughs> conditions are fairly bad, like, aren't they? Uh, they're, they're just okay. Like, we're going to get any worse. Like, the grass is wet as well, isn't it? Like, it really. Was, and I had, that was the dew this morning. Like, yeah. It was more dry yesterday, so it should be pretty okay in another hour or two. Yeah. We can't be waiting for a dry hour every day. I think that's it. I think the weather's going to um, break again this afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, it's just coming in. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, they're talking about. Yeah, they're saying tonight now it's just going to break, like, so we've got that window now till 9 or 10 o'clock to get it in. So. And do you have many acres to cover there today? Or? There's about, I think, in this farm, there's about. 50 maybe 60 acres not quite sure hmm okay the GPS will tell us the end of the day. <laughs> well I, I have the acre meter here on the harvester but that wouldn't be 100% accurate but there's a GPS on Willie's tractor there the the 150 yeah she's um, GPS and auto track so yeah she's just she's just goes around the field and it'll map out the field it's green star John Deere green star okay right so she's just 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 Tell us exactly what's inside it. It's kind of something you couldn't really do without nowadays. No, though, is no, it? no. Geez, we, this is our first year with it now, like, and just something we had, we should have got ten years ago. Like, yeah, we were working for one farmer there now, and he, he rented a new piece of ground last year, and there were seventy acres in it, and we could only get sixty-eight this year, and we GPS it. Wow. There's probably seventy-eight map, seventy map acres there, but there's only sixty-eight. Yeah. Um, chopping acres there, like so. That's good for him. <laughs> yeah. <it's good> for <laughs> him. <laughs> Probably just paying two acres for ditches and stuff. That's it, yeah. I think Green Star is the way forward. No? I think every contractor should have one. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. She's off of track now. So um, we had six row Sam go on it this year. And uh, the lines were straight on. Mm. Even for spraying as well. Like, it's a super job. Like. <laughs> At the moment we're agricultural, I would like to do a small bit more planter and maybe beef cattle as well. Um, who knows, maybe in another two or three years, maybe something to do with green energy or something like that. I, I always love that and I think there's a room for it here in Ireland, so hopefully if, um, if that comes down the pipeline we'll take it on. Anyway.
my role in the whole um, business at this stage now is I drive the loading shovel occasionally, not all the time, but a lot of the time, and that way I can keep in touch as to what's going on. Uh, James and David are the men now that are driving the business on. I've gone as far as I want to go on it because um, we have a dairy head at home which must be looked after. So um, I have the best of both worlds. I can be milking cows and I can be at silage, which I like doing. And um, back to the machinery where I belong. As we move on to the maize harvest, we talked to Dave about the crop and how to manage it. Yeah, I know 2015 was a good maize harvest. There was the odd field um, that was a bit sticky, but I think a few of the lads like to have a bit of a challenge every now and again, trying to get out a full load inside in a, inside in a mucky hole, but uh, no, it was okay. We broke nothing out of us, so that was the main thing. Yeah, we got, uh, we got new tires there and, and a few bits and pieces, so just to help them bring them out of the field, so it was good. I know it was it was grand. It was a lot better than 2012 in a way. The dung is 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 is, is um, important part of our business. We have a couple of very good customers, a couple of very big customers. Um, and as I was saying, it's very important to the likes of growing maize and growing whole crop. It breaks down over the year and is constantly releasing fertilizer or food, if you want to term it, to the crop as it needs it. And um, it's also helping the ground as well in, in, in warm aeration in the ground and everything like that and um, it's we will be keeping it on in the future and we won't be giving it up and um, I suppose going on to the sowing in the maize we're using a six row Samco um, last year I had a 6150R with a Green Star Autos there um, it's, it's the way forward it definitely is um, eat, you, can you can guarantee that if you use that sowing maize there will be no skips in the field, um, all the lines will be dead straight so if you have to spray the maize later on in the year for a nice spot or a weed killer you, you should have no, you should have no um, damage done to the maize using the tractor and sprayer because your, your lines are straight on and it's a lot easier to cut in as well when the lines are straight. <coughs>
Yeah, we had um, John Deere in the past, and uh, I think that actually ran you down through what we had. Um, when we first started cutting maize in 05 or 06, we did 7500 and a Kimper 4500. Yeah. Um, it was a grand machine when you got it set up. Um, a great machine to take in the crop and lots of horsepower and everything, but it had no four wheel drive. Um, then we went on to a 7550. We kept the Kimper 4500 for the front and um, we ran that up to 012. In 2013 May season, then we got a class 940. And previous to that, I had been in Australia driving class and uh, I just couldn't get over how user friendly they were. Um, the corn cracker in, out, no time. That was a problem with the John Deere, I thought, because it took a lot of time and it's not a job everyone wanted to do either. Like uh, when you had to take out the corn cracker, got or when it got blocked in the field, there wouldn't be too many lads rushing over to help you. Yeah. But um, look, John Deere is a great machine, but I think from a driver's point of view, class at the moment is just easier to put in the corn cracker, take it out. Um, it's a lovely cab, lovely space in the cab. Um, we also got a new uh, Arbor 600, which was a great, which was a great boy, so it was um, a great step up from the 4500. Um, Kemper, and um, we we're after running that now four years, isn't it? Yeah, and there's uh, no trouble with it so far. I, I suppose it's all done how, how you mind it. Like I, I drive it myself and I mind it myself. And you know, if you're going to have every different fellow up in the mace header, and he's he's not going to care about it, or he's not going to, you know, he can come back with with bin guiders or anything like that, or he could have the discs in an awful shape for cutting it or something like that. Like, but. Uh, no, I couldn't fault it. Yeah, owner driven is is definitely is definitely a good idea. But um, there has been lads in the past. There was a lad that drove the harvester for my dad, and uh, he minded it very well for for years and years and years. It's just, I'd say, pick someone at the start of the year and leave them on for the whole year, and don't change that. Um, you can change it, maybe drawing, but not with a the harvester. There's uh, too many things to go wrong with it and you, you need experience in it as well to make sure in around the chopping box and in around the blower and make sure she's getting greased and cleaned down every day and just look after it and it'll look after you. That's what I think in a way. Um, I'd be lucky with Steph. Um, a lot of the lads driving for me now will be my friends as well. Like So um, I'm quite lucky that way. Um, and they'd be good reliable as they look after the machine. Like the weather is a major player in, in 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 working all hours or working even through the night, and sometimes we just can't avoid it, and we have to do it. And, and the lads understand that, and that's great to have that. Like to have a great understanding of how the business works, and they're not complaining. They want to go home at ten o'clock, or if they want to work on a Sunday, they just go and do it. And I'm grateful for that. So if you're watching, lads, thanks very much. <laughs> I was driving the 6150 direct drive. All right, yeah. yeah. Green Star. Your tractor's the 6930 anyway. Yeah, that's right. Do you decide to get changed anytime soon or will you keep it for another few years? I uh, will get another few years out of the war, sure. Mainly does raking and drawing, nothing else, so. Yeah. She's perfect, she'll walk away at that. So. 10 years old next year, you might get her, get her shipped up. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> John Deere again. Uh, which one would you go for now, a 6150 or? Um, 6150. For raking. 
nothing bigger than for raking because yeah. you know wouldn't really pay to have a big tractor rake, you know. <laughs> It is May's day two and Dave has organised a demo of the new high spec compactor. So they hitch it on and off they go. Yeah, we got a demo of the high spec compactor um, in the May, so we did. It's a lovely trailer. When the trailer first came into the field, I didn't think it would um, it would get out of the field with the load full, um, but we filled it right up and um, it spread the weight over the ground very well. And um, it's a very well built trailer, so it is. And I think there's room for it here in Ireland. Um, if we can. If we can put a salvage outfit on the road with three tractors and three trailers instead of three instead of five tractors and five trailers, um, I think that's the way to go. And um, we were very pleased with it. it makes it marvelous things, yeah. Instead of running five tractors up and down the road, and to make a lot more sense if you could run three and carry the same crop and same tonnage up and down the road with just uh, three men and three tractors. Loader driver would have a bit more time to to work with the pit. Like, as a few five tractors come in and out, he's obviously going to be parked for a certain length of time while them lads are tipping, or he's going to be either up in the pit or waiting to come back off the pit. But if you've only three lads come in and come out, and I think the compactor it also ejects the load, and instead of tipping it, it's it's just a lot safer. Like, so maybe in years to come, with farm safety being we've been so ag yeah being aggressive as well like that maybe trailers will will have to be, be ejected instead of tipping
Some people prefer the older deer models, and then he's having a good mix of 30 series and R series. I asked Dave which one he likes most. Oh, the 6190R. It's just an awesome tractor to drive. It's loads of power. You're high up. Um, I never got caught with it yet, and I'm in in the field or in a hill like so. Um, it's just a nice, comfortable tractor, and you know any job you're doing, you're you're over it, and you're in control of it, and it's, it's just a nice tractor. It's well finished inside in it. Um, there's only one bad complaint I have about it, as I would in my next tractor, I'd get a sunroof. Um, I have no sunroof in that. As you can see, it's a full door, panoramic door, and there's only a back window, and you don't like to be opening the back window the whole time because not only from the noise of the machine behind, but the dust and yeah, yeah. So sunroof is definitely on the shopping list for the next one. <laughs> oh yeah, look, the 6150s are—they're they're a big tractor for their horsepower, and uh, they're plenty good enough for drawing silage and ploughing. So they are. And um, I think that suits them fine. I wouldn't be putting them on the triple mowers now or anything like that. But uh, they can draw a silage and pull a plough, a five for a plough, and four metre power harrow all day. Like so, they do what I ask them to do. So I'm happy with them so far. And when we had no major trouble with them, yeah, w one of the 6150s had a turbo issue, and uh, we got a modification of it and done by John Deere. And uh, it's been fine since. Other than that, we we have no we had no trouble at all from from any of the R series, and they are a great tractor. I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, John Deere are, are heavy on fuel." I, I don't think they are heavy on fuel. Yeah, we would have a couple of customers that would be, let's say, heavily stocked, and they want to keep the ground around their yard as a grazing platform. And there is a few of them now renting Con Acre and growing maize on it and we have to bring it back so there is longer hauls with it but I think at the same time um, there is a future for it because um, on a good year you get up to 22 or 24 tonnes per acre and that's what farmers want to go and rent con acre put a high volume crop into it bring it home and fill their yard Is there anything in particular you need to look at? I am. I'm looking at the. Um, I'm looking at the dosing. I'm going to, I'm going to put on this. Um, this stuff here. Silo Max for maize. Right. In Auckland. And um, I'm just looking at the, at the dosing. Would it be used much now with farmers or? Yeah, you'd, you'd like. Every fella is different, the particular fellas would use it alright, like um, treats about fifty tons actually, the section treats. Right. So you're talking maybe maybe two and a half acres. Right. Would well, many farmers use the inoculum for silage now? Um in two thousand and twelve ne nearly every fella used it, but this year. There's only a few fellas used it. Right. Mostly powder, you wouldn't get much actually liquid.
As we finish up with Denny's, Dave explains why he'll be sticking with his tractors. And Jarrah also tells us about their plant business and discusses their plans for the future. I like John Deere's, they always did what we had to do and when I was young lad, Dad had them and now I have them and I'm not going to be changing. Um, them flags up there are there for a reason and that's where they're going to stay and if a Fint came in or a New Holland came in at the right price, I don't think I would even budge. I'm a John Deere man and that's the way I'm going to stay. For the tractors anyway. <laughs> the foragers may be different. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm happy enough with John Deere, yeah. Um, we used to operate in several different quarries throughout the country, really, mainly with loading shovels, and we've done our bit on the, the motorways as well, with um, dump trucks and uh, excavators. So that's all in the past now, and we continue to work in one quarry at the moment with a loading shovel, a Volvo 150E, with the same driver with the last maybe 18 to 20 years he's with us now and um, that's a good steady income regardless of weather so i'm quite happy where i am at the moment i have two young men here who are anxious to drive on this business so it's time for me to step back and lay them at it i'll help them when i can so it's in good hands with these two lads so the customers are happy, no? the customers are happy yeah and I, I still keep in touch with the customers so i know exactly what's going on of course. so once the customers are happy if things should be okay. Now we move west to the Shannon River and visit Kieran Murray Contracting based in County Roscommon near Athlone. We talk to Kieran and he tells us how he got started and gives us a rundown of his operation while we watch his crew at Slurry. Um, I started in 2006. We, um, my father and I was mowing for hire, and I kind of got dragged into it. Um, bought my first John Deere 1355 mower. Um, got addicted. Smell of grass, and kind of stuck to it ever since. We've built it up all the way since then. And what, what are your main, what's your main operation now? Uh, Bailing. Slurry, some tillage, not a lot. Receding. Receding, yeah. Um, we, our biggest part of it would be baling. Uh, round baling, wrapping, mowing, stacking, full service. I hired a tractor for the first year of Gerhys and Burr. Um, I bought a TS-115 the following year and she's still in the fleet and she will be. We bought a TM-140 after that, we kept her two years, we traded up to a not, we bought a new Not 8 115 and slowly built it up, there's 68 we bought an 09 and we had a TSA 125A at one stage too. Right, we traded what, was that? That, what role did that have? She was bailing for two two years. We um, we traded her in again a seven for the seven two hundred in twelve. Yeah, we bought a class in twenty fourteen a six fifty Arian. She's a loader. She's front links. Um, she's a Cebus model. She's a nice tractor. Very comfortable. Yeah. Um, she does all the bale stacking and drawing bales. She's she's used for all that. Tony Ray had the lot too, don't Yeah. We hired our tractors. Um, Tony has a TS-115, not not. It does all the raking. Um, they have a 520 class Arian, a 131. We use that as well. With a front loader. With a front loader. Did you do slurry from day one or just got into that bit of work? Father-in-law started doing his. Slowly built up. We have a mixed batch. We have Abbey, Belmac, and a high spec. Uh, variation. Well, the Abbey was first bought. Belmac was bought next, and the high spec was bought in second hand, and just to fill a hole. And you prefer the tanks, or is this a tank of tank? I lean towards the Abbey. 
some of the boys might lean towards the Belmac, but overall the Abbey would be the firmest on the road. Do you much road work with the tanks or would be all in the field? Uh, it would be a good bit of road work. A lot of farms are small this, over this side of Shannon. And how you get them stuck regular? Regular. It depends on the driver. Owen is fairly good to get them stuck. What size tanks are they now? Would you change up for a bigger one or would you stay the way they are? I'd stay around the same. Ground conditions won't allow you to go much bigger around here. Would you plan on change any time or is it out of tank or would you drive, use four? Or? Um, I don't know. In time we'll see. It's early June and the grass is ready to be cut, so Ray and Owen head out with the mowers, and then Ray tells us about his first love. That's a mighty looking tractor you have there behind you, Ray. I do. I do try and keep it, keep it half maintained, and try and keep it washed and tidied and. Took my own few bits and pieces, not to have it looking like Kieran's. <laughs> so I couldn't have people mixing them up. Well, that's it. Well, what customization have you done to it to make it look different from Kieran's? Well, we went all out and went for air horns. So you might as well be, if you're not seen, you might as well be heard. <laughs> and a few extra orange lights, and we've matching LED orange parking lights in it, and just custom number plates and extra aerials. And few small bits just to... Keeps you safer on the roads anyway. Well, that's the thing. There's, You'd there's be always on the road, sure, really, wouldn't you? That's, you know, so. You're on the road full time, like if you don't have it right, you might as well yeah. not have it. I run in class doubles. Run a 3100 front mower and a 3500 back mower. So it'll be all about output. 68 is for that. Oh, no bother. Loves it. Walks away with them. It's main, it's the mowing tractor, she is number one on the mowers, yeah. the class front and back mowers and other than that then drop them and you could be drawing from drawing bales to having a double Fleming carrier, maybe one on the front as well, yeah. helping the likes of pan that draw in and stack, right. you could end up then going bale trailer, slurry tank, land leveler, you could change 40 machines in the day like anything is possible.
Owen drives the TM155 and has a chat with us about the bailing operation, while we see Tony, Kieran's father-in-law, and Ray's dad raking. And you do most of the bailing with this tractor? Yeah, this in the T7 just be bailing side by side. Yeah, and how do you find that for pulling the baler now, is it? She's well able. She does find her moments sometimes in the 30 foots, but she yeah. carries on through. And tell me, how do you like the balers, the, the new welders? Loved them. Couldn't what, fault them in any way. What, what brand are they? They're uh, RP245 right. Trophy. Tell me you're going to join the Yellow Revolution, are you? No, you don't need them when you're quick enough. <laughs> what kind of bales output would you be getting an hour an hour? Roughly about 80 an hour when swarting is 30 foot. More or less, depends what type of grass it is. Bale size. Yeah. Yeah. Get near 100 on a tee. Yeah. You'll be able to go that bit quicker. And what kind of speed would you be doing when you're um, going in 30 foot? Ah, uh, you'd be 9, 10k constantly going. Mm. Pull her back then when she's coming near bail and there, give her time yeah. to net. Yeah. Add so her well able to take it to. She's a wide reel of the 2.2 meter reel. Yeah. And it's way handier for cornering and everything. And um, so you're kind of doing roughly a bail every 45 seconds then? Yeah. Yeah. And you know. Keep them pumping out. I use the TM and odd time bits of everything, whatever is going, pick bits of everything. What one do you prefer? If it was my choice now, I'd have a class. Go for the newer models. What is that? Yeah, comfort. Comfort in this. How many class tractors do you run now? Two, 650 and a 520 Arion. Whoever's, whatever's going on like. It's a very tidy wrapper, isn't it? Like, you know, it's, it's... They're strong with the wrapper. Yeah. They're very quick. The new guys, like, Yeah. Twin dispensers, I'd say, make a big difference, do they? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's mm. Nearly putting out uh, 110 bales an hour or more. So it's well able to keep ahead of the, the two balers then really, isn't it? Just keeping into them now. Yeah. Just to draw on and slow as everything down.
David is the type of rapper man and is busy following the bailers around from farm to farm. He prefers rapping over the other jobs and tells us why. So how long do you work with uh, Kieran, David? Oh, this is my second season now. And what's your main job? Uh, rapping, TS-105 and Tanker. Uh, how do you find that for rapping? Did you use that before that? Or? No, just that. No, I just great It's awful fast compared to a lot of lads what they have. Uh, rapping, slurry and anything like this, there is to be done. What job do you prefer? I prefer rapping now. And they're no, no real hardship compared to Slurry, you know. I see, uh, what model of rappers are they automatic or do you have to wait on yourself? No, just automatic, when you set it to automatic, yeah, just press one button and yeah, there you go. As many bales now, we've got to keep up the rapid keep bailers. Keep up the two bailers, eh? Hey, you're putting out to 110 bales an hour, 115. Had a good day, get no hardship. Like you've plenty of roads that are rapid, too. Oh, yeah, you've been long changing them when you choose to it. Do you uh, bring the rolls rap with you or? No, farm, farmers, farmers play all, yeah. Uh, and uh, what tribe would you normally drive the slurry through at slurry? Uh, maybe the T7, 200. Abbey Tank, behind it. Best joke in the air. Do you like using that? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. Is this rapping ra all season or? Yeah, rapping all season. We'll do an abbey draw now if we're drawing here right now. Just to kind of trailer and uh, what type of using doing that? Well, I bring the TS 105 with that as well now. That's the best show, yeah. Okay. But like, would you prefer rapping in the field or rapping like when they're lined up ready to be stacked? Yeah, a lot quicker when they're lined up now. You'd probably a lot more bales because you're not moving from here to there. Like, but in the field, it's better now you're not. It wouldn't be as boring, but still, it's slower, slower process to that. So the lines up should have been nearly, everything would be nearly drawn, so it's nearly always lines, everywhere you go. And um, would G like draw it back from the field where you're bailing and back to the yard, between lines of the yard and wrap their lines? Yeah, put them into the, it's almost like the yard and then stack them, it's closer then for a second. And that way yourselves lining them up like oh, yeah. the farm, really? Oh no, we just saw us, yeah, with the trailers. And would you fire long draws like, for the wrap, like, would you have much in the road drive around? Uh, not too much now. Dad, day, uh, some depends on who you're doing it for. Some farmers around their own bales, we wouldn't be doing stacking for them at all, so you'd be going around the fields, wrapping for them, just them, um, yeah. Just summers, yeah, for now. What's your favourite job in the whole operation? Uh, probably rapping, that's all I'd be doing much of than small bit slurry. Sorry, it's good enough job, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, and yeah, don't get any hardship. Yeah. Most places you're going to, you get a good bit of hardship as well. You get no hardship rapping, you guys, so you just change your own rap. That's all. Depends on what sort of rap do you get. What do, you, what? do you prefer a certain type of rap, do you? Uh, some rap now is, some rap is cheaper rap, but not good at all. Breaking and that sort of thing. Break your heart. Auto will be breaking every few times. Every, nearly every second or third bail if you get bad rapping. If you don't fix it and go again and it should be breaking again. Trying to tell farmers about rapping, Exactly, and they won't listen to you either. Since they started buying glass tractors, one thing is clear they are seriously comfortable. Pat talks to us about them. So Pat, this is your tractor anyway? Yeah, I drive the 650. How do you like it? It's great, Chuck. No, best thing you ever bought into the yard. Really? Yeah. Would it beat a New Holland or...? or? Beat them hands down any day. That's a brilliant joke now. It's a uh, serious comfort in it. Yeah. All spun cab and suspension. Right. And you have a loader on it as well there? Yeah. What kind of work would you be doing with this? Uh, mainly? Mainly loading bales. Drawing bales and does a bit of mowing and stuff. Yeah, and the hauling. For the summer. And, yeah. And then slurry and whatever then for the. Rest you do of a bit of mowing with it as well, I think, do you? Or? Yeah. She's 10 foot more for her, yeah. Well, she, I'm sure she's well able for it then if that's the case, isn't yeah, it? She wants more of them. <laughs> She'd be well able for triples, would she? I'd say so. She's yeah. chipped. 
Yeah, she was chipped. Get on to them this winter now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Are you going to do any modifications to it this winter, right? Or are you going to keep her the way she is? Depends if he gives me the checkbook. <laughs> but if he did give you the checkbook, what would you go for? I would stick a chrome exhaust and chip her. When the work has to be done, the crew work late, so we take a brief look at them bailing past midnight. On a quieter summer's day, we catch up with Ray cleaning his tractor and head out with Pa doing some hedge cutting. What did you plan now for the winter time? Yeah, there's plenty of fixing to be done and service and bits of everything. Right. Still be bits of hedge cut. It's grand now, I like the hedge cut. Yeah. You don't use the class there behind you now, you use the TM155. No, 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 I use the New Holland for that sort of a job. How dirt. do you find the New Holland and the McConnell hedge cutter you have? Uh, she's a good joke now, the TM. Yeah. Wouldn't fault it either. Yeah. Good old hedge cutter as well, it's well able for everything. It does tidy jobs. Yeah, well able for it. Unlike the, the lump of wire it caught there earlier on when we were... Yeah, that was a bit of a mishap, all right. <laughs> Farmers always tell you there's nothing there. Yeah. You may do a recce the next time yourself. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Would you have good wire snips, I suppose, not too bad. No, wire snips in a hand. <laughs> You're not doing too bad at all. Exactly, yeah. Papa, how's the hedge cutting going for today? Not so bad, no. Apart from a bit of wire. It's the kind of thing that'll happen most days anyway, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'll happen every day. We take a look at Kieran receding some lay ground with his New Holland T7200 and Pottinger Power Harrow. What receding do you do? Um, mainly lay ground and um, back into grass. Do you do much plowing then or? No, we do an ice bit. Just receding is it? Just receding, yeah. Do you do much plowing yourself now or do you don't like it or ever nice do it? No, Ray does all the plowing. Yeah, any good is it? No, he's not bad. He has his days. 
Um, we had a tree for a reversible. We found it was too heavy for some of the bog gardens we have around here. So we just stay with the four for a single, I think. Less weight on tracker. Yeah. Yeah, do a little bit of routing, all right. Do you do much plowing? Uh, say two f 200 acres would probably be the tops of it. What sort of plow do you use? Uh, a convertal and AD80, I think. So we plow in 16 inch scrapes, then just try and get the 650 tire down, and if it wouldn't be plowing deep, there'd be no point bringing up too many stones. Plenty of stone pickers that you can use here. There are certain bands of land would have a lot of stone and other places then you'd, you'd never be surprised. You'd often see fields could, could run from perfectly brown clay with no stones into quarry and into bog in the bottom section. So there's, there's no such thing as an easy day's ploughing where every field is the same. You'll, you'll always meet a good challenge. It's variable to say the least. Oh, definitely variable, yeah. Um, Kieran was saying though you had a tree for a reversal. We had for a while but we couldn't get to work with the big tires. She'd work on the TS-115 alright but for some of the ground the TS just wasn't able to pull it through it without getting stuck. So we had to... Train That's the thing yeah and you know you're far on if you can keep moving and only bringing four furrows. It's as handy as stopping up and getting stuck and... Opening middle and off you go. Yeah. As we see some hay being bailed, the weather is about to break in a few hours. Kieran enlists the help of Ward Agri Contractors with their New Holland T7200 Blue Power and Welger Baylor to assist. You're master of all the tasks. How do you like the Welger balers? Love them. Or oh, animal to take grass. We yeah. had we had McHale's and you were you weren't getting the output. Really? And you were what, down the gears, they weren't able for thirty foot swarts. What bra what model McHale's were you using? Five fifties. Five fifties. Back in zero eight and zero nine I think. And, and what wrappers were you working behind then? Oh you had McHale HS two thousands but hmm. We're gone fully from the kale now for output. That's yeah. the biggest letdown. There's not every day there's need for two of them, but when pressure's on, and say if you have the boys drawing bales for the day, there could there could be a hundred bales lined up down in one man's farm, there could be two hundred up in another man's farm. Yeah. And you don't want the wrapper man out all night, so whoever's back to the yard first, drop their implement and put on the wrapper and go get it done. And yeah. So it keeps every man finished at the same time.
As we finish up this DVD, we take a look at Ray's T6080 replacement, the Class Aryan 650 Black Edition with loader and front linkage. How many dances does it take to make a class nine or eight work? Change like one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice skip there, Declan. How did you manage that? I was supposed to get that on camera, like. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you wouldn't want to do a Colin job on it. Oh, Colin? <laughs> I see uh, Colin's off getting a job now with the SP. <laughs> what are you doing, sweet dick? Because I want to try to lay up this to get another boat up here. <laughs> so, who's the boss in the outfit, lads? 
Tech slim, tech slim. <laughs> ja, ja, ja. Ja, ja, ja. Sommige ja. bastards is over de snap voor niet. <laughs> Too many chiefs are not Indians. Ja. <laughs>